Hey everyone, it's Mike here from The Art of Guitar. Today I'm holding this ukulele. It looks kind of funny on me, but uh, especially in front of a Headbangers Ball shirt. I just realized that's kind of funny. I'm wearing that today while playing a ukulele. But I was shopping online the other day and in the recommended section was this book. It's called The Best of Metallica for Ukulele. And just because of the cover, it looks kind of badass, but then you see the ukulele, it's kind of confusing. But out of morbid curiosity, I picked it up and I thought, you know what, I could do like a bad tab type video for this. I can go through it, play some of the riffs from some of the songs and see if it can actually translate over to an instrument like this. And in the comments section, you guys can let me know which ones you like the best and which ones you didn't think work at all. Okay, because I happen to be wearing this shirt, I feel like I have to play March of the SOD at least once. Okay, let's get started. So the first song in the book is Battery. And I thought, okay, Battery's probably gonna sound okay, just because in the real version, there's the classical guitar intro. So at least that part could sound okay on a ukulele, but let's check it out. That part sounds okay. Uh, the lead part would go like this. Okay, so the next song is going to be Metallica's biggest commercial success, which is Enter Sandman. Uh, I think the beginning should sound pretty good, but I don't know what the heavy part's gonna be like on here. Let's see. That sounds okay. It sounds a little bit like uh, my mom's Korean music that she used to play when I was a kid. <laughs> it had that kind of sound for some reason. All right, so I think the intro showed a little bit of promise, but when it kicks into the distortion part, it just doesn't hold up. So I'd have to give this one a thumbs down. All right, now we've come to Fade to Black. Now, in my mind, I can imagine the beginning being very interesting, trying to play the lead part on a ukulele with these tiny, tiny little frets. That should be a lot of fun. It's a lot more choppy than I want it to be. You know, I'm so used to playing this on guitar and you're able to let the notes ring out really well. It's a lot harder to do that on a ukulele, so that didn't sound the best. Let's try the lead. Those frets are so small. Now the part that's gonna be very interesting to do here. Okay, now let's move to the verse part because I think that actually sounds pretty good on a uke. Here we go. I was really curious to see how For Whom the Bell Tolls would sound on a ukulele, and it starts right off with these big chords, big for a ukulele, but... It's about as big as it gets. And then I thought, okay, Cliff's bass part might sound kind of cool. And then I had to laugh when I tried to play the heavy part with the power chords, just because as you heard earlier with March of the SOD, it just doesn't have any power, obviously. Okay, I know you guys were headbanging while I was playing that. So sadly, I have to give For Whom the Bell Tolls a thumbs down just because it doesn't translate very well, but surprisingly, Jump in the Fire does. Maybe I'm just being kind of biased because playing it is so fun on the ukulele, but uh, I don't know, I think it sounds kind of cool too. Now they actually want us to play these high power chords. But I thought it sounded better if I took the highest note, brought it down an octave, and played it like this instead. Sweet F. Let's keep going. That was tough. Okay, on to King Nothing, the main riff. This is another one I had to make a slight modification. So it starts out like this. 
and then they say to go. But that's not really how the song goes. And I know that's kind of funny saying that when I'm playing a ukulele, but uh, the notes were actually gonna be this. So it's an octave jump like that, and it's actually kind of fun to play, so. Okay, we've come to the song that I was the most curious about. Remember when I said I had a morbid curiosity of what this book had to offer? It was mostly because I was thinking, what are they gonna do for Master of Puppets? Surprisingly, it's a lot like the song, just way higher sounding, obviously. I'm gonna go back to using a pick again, and uh, let's hear it. The next part. Now here's a part where they actually made a note mistake. That's what they want us to do. I think they meant for us to just do power chord slides. There was a misprint of some kind. I prefer just to do a barred version of that. Okay, now we've come to Nothing Else Matters. This is another one that I predicted would sound pretty good just because it's a lot of clean sound arpeggios in the actual song. Uh, let's see how it translates over. It's funny, I just bought this ukulele. It's already fretting out on me. All right, let's do the next part. That sounds pretty good so far. Now this part's strange in the book. That's what they say to do, but it's inaccurate. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change it just so it sounds closer to the song, even though it jumps up an octave here in a weird way, but I'd rather do it like this. Then back to the beginning. Okay, one was the reason I got into Metallica. Let's try it on ukulele and see what happens. Sounds okay. Let's do a little bit of the solo and see if it sounds okay. Here we go. Tiny, tiny frets. We gotta try the machine gun part. That just made my day. Now what's really funny is they don't transcribe the final solo, it's a little too crazy I guess for a ukulele, but they do the middle solo which has a little bit of tapping. Wish me luck. I can't wait to pick up my guitar again. No offense. They actually added Ride the Lightning to this book, and the beginning sounds okay. However, the way they transcribe the main riff is kind of sad. I think they could have at least given us a little bit of a hammer-on into those notes, just so it sounds a little closer to the real thing. I had this crazy idea to add distortion to the ukulele and then play it over the top of actual drums and bass to hear what it would sound like in a band situation, and here's what I came up with. We're on to Sad But True. Now, I didn't think I was gonna like playing this on the ukulele, but there's some sort of rhythmic quality to it if you play it a certain way. I guess that's more of like a John Mayer way to play it or something, but it's actually a lot of fun to do. Seek and Destroy was kind of a letdown. I don't know why I had high expectations for this song on the ukulele, but uh, here's what it sounds like. If you think about it, it really can't sound any better than that on this instrument. So like I said, I don't know why I had such high hopes, but I uh, have to give Seek and Destroy a thumbs down. On to another song that I predicted would sound pretty good, and that's the Unforgiven, just because in the real song there's the classical guitar element. So let's give it a shot. It 
It sounds really good to me. And when you play the next part, the lead part, you can actually add a little chord melody to it. So if you want to strum and go like this, it actually works pretty well. Now the biggest disappointment for me was that Sanitarium didn't sound too good on the ukulele. I thought it would be perfect for this. I thought it'd be a really great thing to actually do a cover of until I tried to play it. The beginning, you know how on the guitar there's those natural harmonics on the 12th fret? On the uke you have to go like this. So it just sounds a little bit weak. But I thought, okay, the next part might sound actually pretty good, but watch how I have to play this. Sounds more like a twisted music box or something. See, even if I try really hard to let the notes ring out, it still doesn't sound good. However, the next part surprisingly works really well on a ukulele. Because of the nature of the ukulele's tuning, all you have to do is some barring and it sounds pretty smooth. Okay, we're on to the last tune and that is Wherever I May Roam. Now this riff is fun to play on multiple instruments. I've played it on cello before, piano, synthesizer, uh, violin, electric bass, and it always seems to sound good. So let's see what it sounds like on a ukulele. See, that's passable. Let's uh, move it down and see what the lower part sounds like with the trills. Then we have to do the chord walk up. That sounds pretty good. I love playing these chords in the middle here. Probably because it's the fattest you can make a ukulele sound. Little flamenco there for you at the end. Okay, hopefully that was fun to watch and listen to someone try to play Metallica with the ukulele. It was a great learning experience for me. Ever since the beginning of my guitar playing, I've been playing these Metallica songs. So it's kind of uh, interesting to move them on to something like the ukulele. And I learned a lot about this instrument from trying. Let me know in the comments section though, which songs you thought translated best to this instrument. And uh, you know my opinion already, so it'll be interesting to read yours. We'll catch you guys later.